Well, um, in acting, I said to my dad, I could do what Rudy can do. So we moved to New York, and um, I auditioned for Ghost Dad. I didn't get the part, but somebody else did. And so they said, would you like to work with Mr. Cosby? And I said, yes. Magazine of the air. We got Lee Bailey here, founder and creator of Radioscope and EURweb.com. This is episode 23 of our podcast, Radioscope Raw, bringing you full, unedited interviews from the company Vault. All of the episodes, as well as our conversations podcast, for the record, are available on our SoundCloud page, EUR News. In the spring of 1993, we went to the MCA building in Los Angeles to interview a little girl who had joined the Cosby Show for its final two seasons. By the time we sat down with a seven-year-old Raven Simone, the Cosby Show had ended its six-year run, and the young actress was looking to add recording artist to her resume. She went on to release four studio albums throughout her career, and Radioscope was there for her very first. It was titled, Here's to New Dreams. From June 22, 1993, here's our raw, unedited interview with Raven Simone. Hi, I'm doing good. You know, a lot of people, millions of you know Americans and people overseas know you from you know your role on the Cosby Show. And mm-hmm. Um, and you know that went off what a year ago, I guess, about a year, two years almost. It's been off. Um, I think so. Right. I think so. Um, tell us about the transition from you from. <coughs> Excuse me. You have to sneeze. From there. Yeah. yeah. Um, tell us about the transition you made from you know being a television star to a, a recording star. Um, or were you always you know, a singer? Because I know you sang some on the show. So this is a natural progression for you to just do this? Well, I like to sing, and I like to hear myself on the radio and be in the top 20 and the top 10, 20, and um, perform and stuff. So, now, you performed this since you were, what, three years old? Two. Tell me how you got your start. Actually, I'm, I'm pretty sure. Well, you can tell me. Just tell us all how you got your start. Well, um, in acting... I said to my dad, I could do what Rudy can do. So we moved to New York, and um, I auditioned for Ghost Dad. I didn't get the part, but somebody else did. And so they said, would you like to work with Mr. Cosby? And I said, yes, of course. And I met Mr. Cosby, and he liked me. Um, tell us what, we have a public on now, you know, what we see as Mr. Cosby on TV. Tell us what it looked like you, for you personally to be, you know, his granddaughter. Or tell us what it looked like, you know, for his granddaughter on the show. What type of person is well, he's a funny person, just like he's funny on the um, show, and he's a great person. He gives um, the people tips and stuff, like to be this, to be that, and he's a very nice guy. And it feels great to be his grand- granddaughter on the show. Um, to grow up literally in front of millions of people, um, tell us how that was. I mean, you just saw you know, a seven-year-old you know, child. Um, tell us how it was you know, being, what, four or five years old on the television in front of millions of Americans and going around. Famous is like, well, one thing that's good, you get to meet a lot of famous people. <laughs> and um, you get to um, ride all over the world and perform and be in the top 20 and the top 10 and <laughs> meet all kinds of different actors and singers and stuff. Um, let's say you're only seven years old, you're somewhat of a veteran. I mean, you've been on TV for years now and, um, and now you have your own. This is your debut, right? Hmm? This is your debut. This is your first first recording. Yes. Okay. Mm-hmm. Um, tell me about um, doing this. Um, now, was it easy to have people make the transition from you from being a TV star to you know recording star? You know, but you got to be careful about the fact that you're seven. Say that big sorry. word. You know, oh, okay. Because you say transition. Yeah, like, like, uh, I'm sorry. Like, I mean, was it easy for people to, to know that you were you know able to sing? Did, did they take you seriously? Like you said, I want to do an album. How did you like? 
then my dad just um called out, and then all of a sudden he called MCA, and he spoke to Wendy, and um, she got me signed up and stuff, and so I think people did believe in me. Now, were you like a little scared doing this, like going in the studio, is that much different? I'm sure it's different than doing a TV tape. Yes, yes, but I wasn't scared. Mm-mm. Now tell me about, if it's called... Um, Here's to New Dreams. <laughs> Tell me about the first thing was what little girls are made of. What are little girls made of? That's what little girls are made of. Okay, now tell me about that song. Now, where did you learn to rap, first of all? How well, did you, you know, hear rap and what made you want to rap? Well, I heard, a lo- I heard a lot of people that rap, and my daddy taught me some, some um, how to um, make rap easier. And, um, can you see that? Um, what's the last question? Uh, <laughs> That's all. What rap stars, you know, particularly you like? I mean, what's your favorite rap star? I like, um, <laughs> really like all kinds of rap stars. I like all kinds of singing stars. It's hard to name them all, though, because I have so many. Now, I'm just curious. You said you were only like seven, and you were probably like what, four when you were on the Cosby Show. How do you remember the lines? Because a lot of people want to know that. A little girl like you, they have like cue cards and like you put them up for you or something? No. <laughs> No, me and my daddy, my mommy just go over my lines a lot. Keep going and going and going over them. Then when it's showtime, I say when it's like when it's ready to shoot the real thing, we go out there and I don't miss a beat. So at a sense, it's just like school studying for a test. Yes. And now that you mentioned school, I'm pretty sure you couldn't go to regular school. So tell me about you know school and what's your favorite subject. Well, I can't go to regular school. And um, I like math, I like art, <laughs> and um, my teachers are great. My teachers are terrific. And um, I have a lot of friends there, so that's, uh, I like, I'm, I'm going to public, I go to public school. And you go to public school? Yes. Oh, people would be surprised to learn that. Where are you from? You, you were in New York or California? Well, um, I was born in Atlanta, then I moved to New York, and then I moved back to Atlanta. So I'm oh. living in Atlanta now. Yeah. And now, how do the children react to you in, in classes? They treat you as a regular little student, or they, change, they treat you like a star, or they keep asking questions, or just like a regular kid? You know? They say, um, are you the girl from the class video? And I say, yes. So um, they're still surprised that I am. So they're... they're Uh, when they say, um, can I have your autograph, I say, I, no, I can't, get, I can't give you my autograph because I can't give autographs in school. <laughs> so, they're really sad. <laughs> school is school, so. Work is work. Now, since you already have a career that, you know, grown-ups would want, you know, a lot of grown-ups want a career in the show business, and you've already started your career and you're only seven years old, mm-hmm. I wonder, is this the same career you want to be in when you, you know, you reach like 18 when you go to college and you really want to be, you know, I mean, I'm pretty sure you don't know really what you want to do. Maybe you do. Well, well, I want to go to college. I want to stay in school until everything's done. And then when I get my job, I, s- I want to still try to be in acting and stuff. Like that. Now, getting back to your debut you on recording, now, another thing I was curious about, when you go on stage, um, tell me about the stage thing. Are you fighting up? Well, the Cosby Show was a live tape, so you're in front of the So you're probably not as scared as you go on stage. No. no. That's just natural. Mm-hmm. <laughs> <laughs> okay. I, um, I sang in front of, like, um, of 86,000 people at the East-West game on a football field. It was terrific. I sang Here's to New Dreams, the next, um, name of my album. Okay. Now, were you really excited about recording this? Now, tell me about, like, the studio thing. Did you have to keep doing take after take? Mm-hmm. To get it just right. And now, uh, do you, like, because you have tracks on there. I mentioned school. I thought this was really cool, too. First day of school. Uh-huh. Is that really <laughs> tell me about your little favorite, like, tracks on here, your favorite songs on here. Well, I like, um, Here's to New Dreams. Raven's Lullaby, Hip Hop Teddy Bear, um, of course, that's what little girls are made of, 
And um You meant to not cutting you off, but you mentioned that's what little girls are made of. What are little girls made of? Sugar and spice and everything nice. <laughs> yeah. Now the video for that is also really cute. Mm. So tell me yes. about the video, you know, doing videos. You know, because when you do TV it's a good look down. Well, one day I'm going to tell you the story how I got That's What Little Girls Made Up on this album. One day my daddy had this song called Ooh Boy, and he let my friends listen to it, my classmates. And um, it's called um, this is, um, <laughs> Ooh Boy for my album that I'm singing. And all the girls said, oh, that's great, Raven. But all the boys said, can you rap? That's when I went into the studio and said, and they, that's what little girls are made of to tell all those boys that little girls can do anything they want. Mm, okay, telling the fellas. <laughs> now, Raven's Lullaby, how'd you guys come up with that? That's, that was a lullaby that was on you or something? Or? Well, well, my daddy wrote that. And um, it's mixed with um, just regular song, just regular singing and rap. It's about, it's about my dreams, and it's about lullaby, and that's the one song that we're going to try that it's, that's, um, that's, that's for, like, a lullaby, but it's funky for little kids, but it's funky. And you keep mentioning, ooh, boy, is that one of your favorites or something? Yeah, <laughs> yes. Why do you like so that song so much? Because it's about school, and it's about a boy. <laughs> No. Okay. No. Crush. Um, getting back to TV now. I understand you did a couple of pilots. Anything happen with them, like pilot deals or whatever? Any of the TV pilots? Will we see you on TV soon? Mm, no, it's sad, but I will be on TV this fall on Hanging with Mr. Cooper. Tell me about the role that you're going to play on Hayden. Do you know yet what part you're going to play? Well, I know I'm going to play. I know I'm going to play as Cousin Vinny. So, but I don't know what character. I don't know what I'm going to do and stuff. Now, the Mr. Cosby show was taped here in New York, so that's going to be taped in California. Yes. Right? Mm -hmm. That'll be a different experience for you. Yeah, a big different. So you look forward to going back to TV and working on, you know, I don't know how often you do, you know, the tape or whatever. Oh, yes. Mm-hmm. To going back to TV. Yes, I do. I really am looking forward to going back to TV. I was wondering, because I mean, as adults, I'm pretty sure they missed the 9 to 5 thing, but when you were in you know, your age, did you miss, like, not going to the Cosby show every day and doing work? Or, I mean, you had, like, I'm pretty sure you had extra time now. As a pro, you know what I mean? You have more time to play and stuff now mm. on TV. No, always I have less times to play. When I'm not doing anything or just staying home with and um, I just go to my friend's house in Atlanta. Ride my bikes with my mom and my dad and my brother. Um, play with my friends and go fishing with my dad and go shopping with my mom. Having lots of fun. Now, speaking of acting, you also play a major role in a, a major miniseries that everybody in America is Yeah, it was called Queen. And I was, I played Queen at the age of five. That was fun. I got to work with a lot of stars. Halle Berry, um, Mr. Ozzie Davis, and Jasmine Guy, all sorts of people. Um, you also did Broadway. I mean, what haven't you done? Thank you. <laughs> really, I don't really know what I haven't done. <laughs> yeah, tell I really me about the Broadway, you know, how that works. Oh, it's called um, Broadway, um, what's it called again? Boys Choir of Harlem on Broadway, and I like um, introducing, like, no, really, I can't really remember, but I did a big, long speech, and I got to work with the Boys Choir of Harlem, and I also did a thing with the Boys Choir of Harlem called One to One, and so I had my little part of singing, because it was a song, and I had my little part of singing, <laughs> that was fun, too, so I did two things with the Boys Choir of Harlem. A, a beautiful little girl. I wonder if anything that you want to do now, anybody you want to work with, or because you've worked with like some of the best people in the industry, you've done a lot of stuff that veterans, you know, they want to do. Anything Raven wants to do next, and anything.
anybody you want to work with? Like, even musically, anybody you want to sing with? Um, I would like to sing with people, Bryson. I would like to sing with people, Bryson, and my dad. Because he's a... Daddy, you are a good singer. He taught me how to sing. He taught me how to sing. Michael Jackson. <laughs> Whitney Houston. Uh-huh. I met him. I met him two times. Oh, wait a minute. Tell me about that. Tell me about how... Because, oh, I mean, everybody wants to know how Michael Jackson is. Tell us how, where you met him and how, what kind of person he was. Well, I made, up, I made him two places. And I gave him, I gave him an award both times. You know? He's a very nice guy and sweet. And <laughs> when I went backstage with him one time, the first time I saw him, he said, we have to set up a, um, we have to go to, we have to have lunch together. And I said, all right. <laughs> lunch with uh, Michael Jackson. <laughs> so we, but we, but we, we had, we didn't have it yet. So he has to call me. He has to call me or I have to call him. Get invited to Neverland. What's that ranch? Yeah. Um, yeah, his ranch. Right. Yeah. Huh? I, oh, I, I hope it I hope Oprah was there, so. <laughs> so I have. <laughs> I want to go there. Because it looks, it looks like a big place with all carnivals and stuff. It's, it looked great because I saw the Oprah special thing. Oh, yeah. One last question. Um,. This summer, there's so many movies out and everything. Um, have you seen a lot of movies this summer? In particular, what's, I mean, what might be your favorite movie? Well, I want to see Dennis the Midas. And um, I want to see Once Upon a Forest. I already seen um, Jurassic Park. Scary. I, I Scary. The kids weren't supposed to see that. Well, they say they aren't, but I saw, yes, one part where this an, this dinosaur, yeah, he looks like a bird. You know those um, lizards that have, they look like um, an umbrella on their neck? They have that, and they have this black stuff, poison stuff that gets in your eye and you can't see. Then, like, they do something to you. And that was the that's the, that's the part I have to close my eyes on. They're um, they're not that many boys. They're all they're like all kinds of boys in movies and stuff. But there's not one girl. So I once I get in those big screens, I hope I'll show those boys something well, that right, little girls can do. You haven't done a movie yet, right? Mm -mm. No, not on big screen. But I've done something of, um, about fire safety. And um, on the Big Apple Circus, about fire safety, and fire safety, and what you should do about fire and stuff. And um, I, and they're showing it. They're showing it in big screen movies, like you know where they show you all kinds of stuff and tell you that there's popcorn and stuff. And they show you all different kinds of movies that's going to be coming out. So they're going to show you. They're going to show fire safety stuff. But one day I'm going to show them those little boys something. Okay. okay, last question. Do you have anything to say to all your fans out there? Here's your chance. Well, I say just be a sweetie and um, be like all those little girls. You could do every anything you want. Buy my album. Don't forget. You've been listening to the podcast Radio Scope Raw. Brought to you by Ravercom Enterprises with writing and production by Cherie Saunders. Be sure to continue visiting our breaking news website, EURweb.com, where EU stands for our daily coverage of everything urban, and R represents our radio scope throwbacks. Lee Bailey here. Thank you for listening, and please. Join us again for another blast from the past on Radio Scope Raw.